Well, the average price of a new car topping out at more than $46,000. Yes, 46 grand. What is a new driver or downsizing driver to do when you want and need a new car, but you have to be budget conscious? Well, you don't have to give up space. You don't have to give up style. You don't have to give up safety. If you're looking at this guy, this is the Honda HRV, which is newly redesigned for 2023. So what has Honda done differently for the 2023 edition? Well, this one's bigger. It's about eight inches bigger overall. It is also about three inches wider. That's where you get more passenger space and more cargo space. And then it has this new design. So you can actually see, if you know the prior model year, it's very clear that it it looks larger, it's longer. It also has a more rounded design. It has a new grill on the front and actually a totally new look to the front and a total new look to the rear end. On the interior, it takes a lot of design cues from siblings, Honda CRV and the Honda Civic, which has just been redesigned. So no surprises there. It looks very familiar. It's all in the family. And actually maybe it gives us a little nod to what we're gonna see in the supersized version of Honda's SUVs, the Honda Pilot. We'll see that one shortly, we hope. But here is what you'll find on the inside. The Honda HRV is longer and it's wider. It has some really pretty lines. It's sculpted, but in a soft way. There are no sharp lines and no uh, nothing jarring here. Everything tucks in nicely. The headlights tuck into the front of the car. The grill is there, very elegant. It has this nice sort of honeycomb mesh to the front grill, framed on top there by the Honda badge. There is a lower air intake there. And then here we have, there are fog lights down here and slender headlights that kind of wrap slightly around the front end. Notice the way that the top of the car is sculpted. You do find creases on the hood line, but those are the only creases you find in this car. All the other lines in this car are soft and sculpted. They're not super sharp, and that actually gives this Honda HRV a really nice look and feel. Here on the rear end, we do have sort of signature Honda taillights. Honda is known for this swooping look to the taillights there, and you see that they've kept that. Then there is a wide rear lift gate and a very nice lower bumper treatment. You don't see um, exhaust pipes. You don't see any excessive badging. All you see here really is the nicely sculpted rear end of the Honda HRV. And something that's very demure here, and a subtle detail on the rear end of the Honda HRV is this. You know that it's all wheel drive because there is the all wheel drive badge that's just sort of um, on the glass here above the badge, the Honda badge on the rear of the HRV. There are a couple of ways to access the lift gate. One is there is a button on the key fob or underneath the badge, you can just tap this button and open the lift gate. Now, it's a pretty basic cargo area, not a lot of bells and whistles. It's a 30, 23 to $30,000 car, so you don't expect a lot, but there is a little bit of a surprise. So you do have uh, a double floor here. You have this floor here. There's a nice cargo space under here, so you've got bins where you can store things. There is a jack, and then underneath this, is a spare tire, which is a really nice thing to have in a car of this price, especially one that gets uh, 27, 30 miles to the gallon. Uh, pretty good to have a spare tire. Now, these seats do fold, they're 60-40 split. All you do is you pull this tab on the shoulder and push the seat forward. It doesn't go completely flat, but it's pretty good. You can slide large items in here. Even with the car, with the seats up, you still have room for several rollerboard bags, a dog crate, a couple hockey bags. You can fit a lot of things in here. You wanna put a bicycle or a carpet or something in here, you can fold the seats down to do that. You do have lighting here inside the cargo area, and there is a 12 volt outlet in case you need power back here. Now, what you don't have is a button to close the lift gate. You'll just have to do it manually.
Inside the Honda HRV, the driver's seat has an electric adjustment, but the passenger seat is manual. So you have a little rail down here, that little handle. Uh, so it's manually adjustable. Inside, the driver has a leather-covered steering wheel, radio controls here, adaptive cruise controls are here, and including, that's the follow distance adjustment, lane keep assist, and then you can increase or decrease your speed here. There is the driver information screen, which is digital. It's quite nice looking. You can tap this little button here and use this dial here to scroll through the different settings on the driver the driver information screen so you can see what it is that you would like to see here so we can we'll set this for audio so there you can see uh, what we have set on the multimedia system here is the multimedia screen and i love that we have the home button here so if i need to get quickly to any of these functions i just tap this button there's a back button and then there's an actual audio dial there which is nice then you have these static controls here these are set they don't move they don't change even when the screen changes you have your general settings there and uh, vehicle settings let's see let's go back vehicle settings there so you have some some nice um, details and it will even show you how to set up your uh, keyless access how to calibrate your um, tire pressure monitor driver assist you know all the different things that are here it shows you uh, what you need to know which is pretty nice it's actually a quite a very nice detail then we have this mesh screen that runs the full length of the dash and rather than the joystick controls that we had in the other models it has these little paddles you can push them up and down and side to side to uh, set the airflow direction climate controls are here then we do have the wireless phone charger here so you just pop this in here pop your phone in there there is one USB port there. We have our cup holders here, which are nice and big, and they have these um, things that will hold your, your cup tightly. Then here we have USB chargers here and here on either side of this command center. So that's kind of nice. And then here is the drive, drive selector. Um, put it in drive or for sport driving pop it down into s and that's where your sport mode is drive mode selector is here and listen so you can see our three drive modes here snow econ and normal if you want sport mode you do have it you just pull your gear selector down into s once you have it in s you are in sport mode but it's not here. Then we have our downhill descent control button here, parking brake, and then we have brake hold. And brake hold is right here. And once I'm in the car and I tap this button, you'll see I have my brake hold light comes on right here. And if I am driving, let's just drive forward a little bit. Once I come to a full stop and I put my foot on the brake, I can take my foot off the brake and brake hold remains in effect until I again tap the accelerator. I really like that feature. There's a nice little space here, which is big enough for my iPhone 13 uh, Pro Max. So it's a quite a large space. Oh, there's a little light under there too. You can see there's a little light under there um, that gives you a little extra lighting if you need it at night. It's a good place to put something like you know, chewing gum or hand sanitizer, maybe your car key, a charge cord, something like that. You could also put things here in the cubby underneath the center armrest. There is a sunroof here. And then of course, these really pretty leather seats with stitching and uh, contrast stitching and they're perforated really elegant a very elegant interior 
in the Honda HRV. Once you put the rear seats down, the only way to get them up is to lift them up manually. They're not electric, but what does that mean? That means they're really easy to lift and push back into place. You can do it with one hand. And that's because there is not an electrical mechanism that makes it a little more difficult. So, you know, win some, lose some, right? Here is what you get in the rear seat. So first of all, with the larger body space, there is a lot more leg room and a lot, it just feels bigger. You have these nice sort of bucketed, slightly bucketed seats, which are pretty comfortable. And get this, for $30,000, you get leather seats in the Honda HRV. That's pretty incredible. So you have these beautiful leather seats. They're very nice, very comfortable. Lots of leg room. I'm five foot eight, and this seat is set for my driving position. So I have got plenty of leg room. I could even cross my legs if I want to. I've got a lot of headroom too. The ceiling is sort of concave. It's carved out above the rear seat passengers for a little more headroom. So if you've got tall passengers who need some place to uh, want to relax a little bit and go for a ride, there is room for those taller passengers. Now, what don't you get? Well, there are not a lot of amenities for rear seat passengers. There is no fold down armrest here, so no armrest. There are no cup holders here in the center. There's a bottle pocket here, um, but otherwise passengers are gonna just have to hold their drink if they can't fit their uh, drink in the bottle pocket. Although it's pretty sizable, it should fit a good size bottle, but a Starbucks cup could make a little bit of a mess. You do not have air vents back here, so maybe not the best for children or pets that need good airflow. Um, and then there are also no um, USB ports. The USB ports actually are in the center console in the command center there. There are four. There are two under the cubby and then two right next to the gear selector. So uh, rear seat passengers are going to have to ask to have their phones plugged in, which means they'll probably be very nice to you because they want that. There is, however, a little cubby here, which is a nice spot for a phone or something small um, if you need to put something there maybe a little hand sanitizer and then of course these leather seats which are pretty nice now if you're talking about kids and car seats and I know this isn't the ideal vehicle but think about the occasional car seat passenger there are two sets of outboard latches there there are two latches uh, lower anchors here and tethers on the rear of the seat Here's the rub on putting kids in car seats though. These seats do not recline at all. We love seats that recline just a little bit to get the tightest fit. So if you are installing kids car seats in here, you will need to really um, get in and put a lot of weight in that car seat and tighten it to make sure that you get the best installation. One more feature that I'll show you is this. The center seat belt is actually tucked up here into the ceiling. It tucks away nicely in, under this little tab here, or you can pull it down and uh, plug it in right there. Honda has simplified the lineup of HRVs for 2023. There basically are three editions. There is the LX, the Sport, and the EXL. We are in the EXL edition, and that for just a shade over $30,000, all included destination and everything, you get pretty much everything that Honda offers on this car. So the new multimedia system, wireless charging, wireless Apple CarPlay, leather seats. You don't get a ton of amenities in the rear seat, but you do get some good features up front where you are gonna spend most of your time if you are the owner and driver of the 2023 Honda HRV. Let's talk about the CVT transmission. A lot of people don't like it because it's loud, but it's one of the things that makes this car affordable and fuel efficient. And that's why Honda, as well as other automakers who opt for a CVT, just opt to include it rather than a standard transmission. It just gets better fuel economy, it lasts a long time, and it's less expensive to build and install in these cars. It is a little loud, so if that's something that bothers you, my recommendation is turn up the music because it's hard to get away from these types of transmissions and especially in affordable fuel efficient cars, that's pretty much what you're gonna get. So learning to live with it is probably a better idea than trying to get around it. In the Honda CRV, we have several different options for drive modes and a slightly different experience. So we can use the drive mode selector down here 
to toggle through the different drive modes. There's snow, econ, and normal. And if you'd like, you can also put it into sport mode, which means just pull the gear selector back to S and we are in sport mode. Now I've been driving around all week, pretty much in normal mode, a little sport here and there, but let's see how it does. It is loud. <laughs> it's that CVT transmission at work. And I'm gonna hop on the highway by zooming around that car. And we were able to explore it and get really good acceleration pretty quickly without hesitation and that's exactly what you want in any car so 158 horsepower um, a lot of equal torque 158 horsepower is pretty good the torque is nice the car sounds loud because of that CVT transmission but it is pretty responsive and it does move pretty quickly so I was able to zoom around, merge, uh, pass a, a car on the highway with no problem and get my, uh, and get, get up to speed on the highway really quickly. Now I am by myself in this car. If I have passengers and, and cargo in the back of the car, I'm probably not going to have that exactly a, as speedy or zippy an experience, but that's okay because that's what we expect. For 158 horsepower and sport mode, the Honda CRV actually moves pretty quickly and with a lot of confidence on the road. So no surprises in the bad way there. Very pleasant, other than that loud transmission. A lot of people really don't like the loud transmission, but I am not one of those. I don't really care. I usually have the radio on. It's not something that usually bothers me, so it's not a big deal. It, as far as I'm concerned. But if that loud transmission is something that is bothersome, you might want to think about looking at other options. We loved the HRV when it first came to the United States, uh, something like a decade ago, not quite. A smaller version of the CRV, a little less space, a little less uh, power under the hood, but a lot less on the budget. The 2023 model starts at about $23,000 and it tops out at just a hair over $30,000, which is quite a drop from that average cost of a new car, which is $46,000. So it really does fill that budget need, but no compromise when it comes to the fun of driving this car, the comforts that you get, and those key features that we all want and need when we're shopping for our next car.